A journalist is a news expert who conducts research and writes articles on numerous topics, including politics, economics, sports, entertainment, and much more. Namaste. This is Babita Shrestha welcoming you to Light and Shadow, brought to you by the Third Eye Group, sponsored by Zen Travels, Washington, D.C. Today, I'm at the residence of Mr. Mani Rana in Godavari, Nepal, the legendary voice of the British Broadcasting Corporation, Nepali Services. I am looking forward to interacting with him. So please join me in welcoming Mani Rana to Light and Shadow. Welcome to Light and Shadow and so honored to have you on our show. Thank you so much for having me on. Your name, Mani Rana, tags to BBC. Well, that's because I worked with the BBC for so long. I worked for the BBC for nearly 32, 33 years. And uh, when people listen to my voice, even today, they sometimes, people of, that, of a certain age group, ask me, if I am so and so, you know, so the BBC has really stuck on me. You just mentioned three decades of uh, experience working for BBC. What was your experience like? It was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. When I went there, um, I, I was working for Radio Nepal before I went to the BBC. And uh, in Radio Nepal, I was only doing the English news. When I went to London, I had to translate English into Nepali. So that was a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit weird for a while, but then I got used to it. It was a very, very nice um, uh, a life in a way. Yeah, because in those days, technology was different. As there was no technology, no, no technology in those technology, days. Yes, yeah. So we had to write with a ballpoint pen in, in the office of the BBC in, in, when I went there. It was just like the furniture in Singadarbar. It was no different at all. But the working condition, the working system uh, and all that was very, very different. I can imagine that, yeah. What was the secret to shine in the media spotlight in the 70s? Um, I think what happened in Nepal in those days was the only thing that people in Nepal listened to was Radio Nepal. There was no television. It was Radio Nepal or the Indian radios or the BBC. And when the BBC started a Nepali service, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. Uh, initially, the BBC Nepali service was only uh, one day a week on a Saturday. Okay. And then we uh, moved to three days a week, uh, every second day, every other day. And then after a long time, it became uh, a daily service. Now, they have a service in the morning and in the evening. But I think the weekend, the Saturday, uh, Sunday services have now been cancelled. Uh, but I suppose it's, it's better to be there five days a week than not at all. So what I was trying to say was because there was a lack of media outlets uh, in those days, in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. um, the BBC Nepali service was a great big success in Nepal. Is there anything you missed doing uh, during your career with the BBC? With the BBC? Uh, there's one thing I really missed. I was never able to interview a, a reigning monarch of Nepal or any other member of the royal family. We had an opportunity once in 1971 when I'd just gone there. We had uh, Prince Ganendra visit the BBC and he was a guest at BBC Television Centre, which is quite a distance from where we were stationed. So, we went to visit him at the uh, television center. I had carried out my tape recorder and my thing. Those days, the tape recorders were very, very heavy. Mm -hmm. German machines, U-hers, they were called, and they had spools. So, we went there. 
with the head of the department of the Eastern, it was called the Eastern Service then, which had Hindi, Nepali, uh, Urdu, and all Bengali and all that. And Prince Ganander was there, was sitting next to him having a tea. And um, I didn't ask, my head of department asked the prince if he would give us an interview. And he said, no, I'm sorry, not this time, maybe next time. So that was one uh, incident that I, I regret. And in the 32, 33 years I was with the BBC, I never had a chance to interview any of our royal family. But I did have a chance to interview uh, Prince Charles in London. What uh, they, the, the system there apparently is that before the prince or any member of the royal family goes to any country, they interview him and then they send the tape to Nepal and it was shown on all the movie halls in Nepal. Mm. My interview with Prince Charles. I mean, that is something uh, I should be grateful for. So what was your experience like interviewing Prince Charles? First thing uh, I have to say about that is you only look at Buckingham Palace from the outside towards the building. Mm. This time when I went to interview Prince Charles in Buckingham Palace, there was a, a colleague of mine from the Hindi service as well. We went inside and before Prince Charles came into the room, we were able to look outside from inside Buckingham Palace. So that is my uh, most uh, exciting thing about that. It, it must have been an honor to be inside. Absolutely, the absolutely. Was there any, um, like, did you feel uh, different being a Nepali uh, from South Asia working for BBC in London? No, because um, there were lots of people from India, from Pakistan and China and all kinds of places. So, I mean, I was the only Nepali then mm -hmm. for a long time, almost nine years before they had another Nepali person come in to work there full time. And uh, we had uh, students who, who came in to uh, help out. Um, and I, I didn't feel any, any uh, strangeness about working there by myself, I mean, being South Asian. So you held the Nepali flag for nine years? Nine years, exactly, yes. Before you got help, yeah, amazing. What was your childhood like? My childhood was spent in Nepal, like yeah. I suppose every Nepali these days, except those who were born abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with my grandparents. My grandparents sort of adopted me, so to say, and that was the way things were in those days. Uh, it was absolute fun. And then um, I, I, was, I was sent to St. Xavier's School which was in Jaulakal, I mean, it's still there now, as a boarder to begin with. Mm -hmm. So the first evening from St. Xavier's School, I ran home. So you were not a child. Naughty child. <laughs> so I don't know what time it was. It was already, it was already dark. The lights were on already. My uncle was uh, in my grandmother's room. They were talking and I quietly went in and then they said, oh, why, why did you come? And you know, it was a big, big uh, missed tamasa. Home. <laughs> you missed home. I, I don't know what I missed. I missed something, so I went home. And then they took me straight back again to school. Uh -oh. Okay, and this, this running away from school continued for weeks and months. And then it just finally stopped one day. I don't know why it stopped. I suppose I got, I got used to the uh, life in school or whatever. Mm -hmm. I had two cousins of mine from, from my uncle's sons and my aunt's son was also there. So it wasn't a question of being lonely, mm -hmm. but I just didn't like it to begin with. What, yeah, what was St. Xavier's school like then? In, I don't know <laughs> which year this is. Um, we had all, um, mostly American priests teaching. Only Nepali was taught by a Nepali person uh, in Jaulakhel and 
here in Godavari. The fact that we were educated by Americans gave us a, a different sense of education. I mean, the Jesuit priests who came to Nepal to educate Nepalese kids have done a fantastic job, which I don't think can be done by anybody else now. So you embarked from uh, a Nepali child taught by American to BBC London. And w while we were in school, we were not allowed to speak Nepali at all. Okay. So every time you spoke Nepali, there was a, there was a stick called a donkey stick. You had your name written on it and you held on to it till somebody else oh. spoke Nepali. So you had to be so careful. You had to be very, very careful. Wow. <laughs> Uh, over the years, technology has drastically improved 360 degree. What is your views to this? Well, today I do not know how modern technology works. Because when I was in Radio Nepal uh, and when I was in the BBC, there was very, very, um, even till, till the late 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. there was very, very little digital technology in in the BBC where I worked. Mm. Everything was written on a piece of paper and with a pen. Uh, just by the time I was leaving, there was, uh, there was, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they had started digitalizing a little bit. Okay. Like in the English uh, World Service, they had more of that. And I suppose in, in the domestic radio, they started all that much earlier, but in our overseas services, there was no digital technology by the time I left. I think the generation today are really lucky. I indeed, I mean, when we had computers to start with, young mm. students who used to come and help, they were very enthusiastic about it, mm. and they were very happy to use it. But we, the older guys, you know, we just didn't like it. But now, I suppose if I was still working there, I would have been used to it. And we were used to a computer by then. Mm. Yeah. What advice would you offer to those who are in the media world today? Uh, I can speak for Nepal at the moment. Uh, Nepal ma media sare chhara I live. Just like je man they chap ni, they bol ni, online mapa ni tesei garni, television mapa ni tesei garni, tu chai ali chai ni manna bori chhara bhaya Nepal mahi. So I suppose what I should say uh, to uh, the Nepalese um, uh, journalists or radio TV personalities is uh, be careful. Mm. Be careful and don't, don't just talk. You know, make sense of what you're saying. That's true. Because now everybody has a camera or phone in their hand and they flash it and... They are all journalists. Yes, everyone. That's <laughs> so true. It, it is indeed sad, actually. It's very sad because, you know, people do not get the real facts when people, when journalists, within quotes, start doing this. Yeah. The ones who really make an effort to make the right uh, message yeah. be delivered. That's so true. You started your career at such an early age. The man with the awesome voice. How many hearts have you broken? Oh, I have lost count of them. I have lost count of them. <laughs> you should there have, were many, many, many okay. hearts that were broken. You should have kept the check mark. <laughs> we could go through it now. Uh, I, it would have made me sad now if I, had a, if I had a list of how many hearts I broke. But yeah, because Money Rana, the voice, the depth, the handsome voice, the graceful <laughs> voice. We've known you for that for years and uh, decades. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I had fun while I was working mm -hmm. um, with the BBC. I mean, you know, it was a great, it was a great time. I was young. Mm -hmm. I suppose if I were there now, I wouldn't enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was 21 when I went there. It was a great, fun time. I can me. imagine in those days, uh, first of all, it's an honor. It's absolutely you know, an honor to go and work for the BBC. for a Nepali child to go to London and work for BBC. You lived in London for so many years. 
What brought you back home? Um, you see, to begin with, when the BBC Nepali service was once a week, I used to go to work about 12 o'clock. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five days. On, on the day we had the program, I had to go in earlier because of the timing. Otherwise, you start work at about 12, uh, hang around, go have a drink. I mean, there used to be a bar at the BBC itself. Every BBC building, well, I don't know about it, about now, but mm -hmm. in those days, I think almost every BBC building had a bar. Mm -hmm. And those days, there were uh, rules whereby bars opened only between 12 and 3 and 6 and 11. Uh, and you couldn't drink at other times. So we, we, we had, uh, we had a, a great time. Um, the bars were always full of the people from uh, the Hindi, Bengali, Urdu services and all that. We were all there. I was the only Nepali, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but later it was fun. Yeah. It was much fun. So uh, no, we know. were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, so, as I was saying, I used to go into work at about 12. And then when the, when the programs became daily, you had to go in a little bit earlier mm -hmm. than 12. The programs there started at 3 o'clock there, British time. So you go in there about three hours early. It's still about 12 o'clock. And it went on for a while, it went on for a while, and then they started new rules and new, the new management had new things coming along their ways. And then you had to attend meetings every day. You had to go to something, uh, some group that you had no connection with and all kinds of things. And then I said, I think I've had enough of the BBC. And that's why I left. After how many years? I think 32 years. I, w I started in 1971 and then I finished in uh, 2003. I started in June 1971. I'll tell you a story about my first uh, uh, trip to London. Uh, we were given, um, it was a British Council scholarship. We were given tickets, British Airways tickets. There was another Nepali guy who was going there to do his PhD. So I had only done my, I was just a graduate then. I mean, a PhD and a graduate, you know, you can see the difference. So I was relying fully on that person because this was the first time I was traveling. I don't know whether it was the first time he was traveling. And um, I said, if anything goes wrong, this man will sort things out, okay? So we, the, uh, the, the airline put us in the hotel and um, I, I told uh, the hotel reception that we have a flight at such a time. Please wake us up half an hour early. We not only woke up half an hour early to go to the airport, but we had breakfast before going out. So by the time we got to the airport, the plane had left. So I said, my God, now I have to go back to Nepal. I mean, I've, I've been away for one day. I'm going to have to go back to Nepal. And luckily, some guys from British Airways came by. We was, it, it was very hot in June, and the airport then didn't have the AC system that you have now. So the ceilings were very high, and there was a fan right on, on uh, very high up. And I was sitting with this other Nepalese guy under that fan. I mean, there was very little wind coming. And then a, a fellow in a uniform, airline uniform, came and said, are you the guys who missed the flight? I said, yes. Say, oh, don't worry, I'll put you on another flight. So they put me on, they put us on an Air India flight. Okay? I like Angres ko kura, Indian ko kura. A British Airways was done in a pair, air in Neva Zanaporio, Banner Pirwa, okay? Janata Jebabinigoim. Only my lip, 
त्यहाँ लन्डन गएर हिथ्रोन सबभन्दा पहिला मैले नोटिस गरेको एउटा कुरा चाहिँ के भने त्यो सडकबाट बढार्ने त्यो भुइँ बढार्ने मान्छे पनि न्युज पेपर पढिरहेछ के अब हाम्रो नेपालमा त त्यस्तो त चलनै छैन बिचारा सो द्याट वाज द फर्स्ट थिङ द्याट स्ट्रक मी एन्ड देन यू ह्याड टु यु यु ह्याड टु के भन्छ the british council person would have met you but because we left uh, we we arrived there on a different airline they weren't there so i had to ring so ring the british council so aba tyo bela ma yaha nepal ma tyo paisa halera phone garne ta chalan nai chaina tya euta indian pakistani ko manche le malai dui dui paisa lagthe phone gare dui paisa diera aba number ma phone garera ani yeso gar yeso gar yeso gar bhanera भन्यो कि सो द्याट वाज अनदर एक्सपिरियन्स द्याट आई नेभर फोगेट यो मैले प्लेन मिस गरेको दुईचोटि एक फेरा चाहिँ म जर्मनीमा हलिडे जान्छु भनेर मैले टिकट प्लेनको टिकट सिकट सबै गरेँ सस्तो त्यो बेलामा ट्वेन्टी पाउन्ड्स रिटर्न है एन्ड आई ह्याड अ टिकट एन्ड वी द एयरपोर्ट त्यो बेलामा लन्डनको हिथ्रो एयरपोर्ट होइन अर्कै एयरपोर्टमा जानु पर्थ्यो so i i was late again and the flight gone yeah oh so that time i wasn't as lucky as i was the first time i had to come back home and then i was living in a hostel bbc ke hostel ma there was an american girl there who said you must go money you must go i'll take you to victoria you you go by train and this that and the other so she took me to the station I bought a ticket and the next morning I went I took the train to uh uh Kimansa Germany. Germany. Okay? Abo London but to Germany to see the Zandern beach ma kk kk parsa Belgium was one country that you had to cross. Abo maile chai Germany jani banera Germany ko visa liya thi Belgium ko visa chaina. So the the police ko the immigration ko panche le He called me and took me to his office and started giving me a long lecture on why I didn't have a visa. So I said, "I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know we had to get out here and this, that, and the other." So he said, "Okay, this time I'll let you go, but if you do it again, you go back to where you came from." So anyway, I went there, got it, uh, got to Berlin. I took a cab. The other one, there was a parking there, so I stopped. And in motor, my taxi, my guy, he was with him, my orderly. अब त्यो बेलामा सबै ढोकामा बेल मान्छेको नाम बेल कसरी जाने अब थाहै छैन एन्ड देन आई प्रेस द बेल आई हर्ड सम वन टक बट नो बडी केम डाउन सो आई वाज वेटिङ देयर एन्ड देन समबडी केम डाउन एन्ड देन दे सेड आर यु सो आर यु हैव यु कम फ्रॉम लन्डन एन्ड आर यु सो एन्ड सो आई सेड यस शी सेड लेट्स गो अप उसको त्यो मेरो साथीको वाइफ अनि त्यहाँ माथि गएर चिया सिया खाएर अनि उसको हस्बेन्ड अफिस गइसकेको रहेछ सी टुक मी टु हिज अफिस अनि त्यहाँबाट दिनभरि यताउति गऱ्यो अनि बाहिर घुम्यो गऱ्यो फर्केर आयो दुईचोटि प्लेन मिस गरेँ कुरा गरेँ अब त पुग्यो होइन अब पुग्यो अब पुग्यो अब पुग्यो प्लेन मिस गर्न आदि एनी फोर्थ कमिङ प्रोजेक्ट्स we should expect of a look how can i with a white beard and white hair expect anybody to offer me something will you offer me something i if i could i would what it depends <laughs> <laughs> it depends no i haven't got anything lined up okay uh, actually somebody did ring me uh, a few days ago maybe a, f- a couple of weeks ago He is starting a new television uh, program. He said, "Why don't you come and help us in this, that, and the other?" I said, "Look, I'm too old now. I cannot. I'm not. You know, I'm not as active as I used to be. I don't read anything now. I, it's it's all gone now." So I said, "No, thank you, and let me." But age is just a number, you know. You don't say you're too old. You just have to keep up. Well, yes, but. Um, 
working in, having worked in England and having to work in Nepal would be a different thing. Mm -hmm. I did work in Nepal with Radio Nepal for a while, but that was just about two years okay. or maybe even less. Now I don't know how the system is. Mm -hmm. You see, there's too much politics going on. Mm -hmm. Everything is politicized, okay? Yes. So it's not going to be easy. So the best thing is to keep away from it. That's a good decision. Thank you. <laughs> That's a good decision. Um, where could we find information about you if people want to know about you, your work? Um, I, there is very little stuff on me on YouTube or Google. Mm -hmm. I mean, people do occasionally come up with it and then they ring and say, oh, I saw you on mm -hmm. such and such a thing. Um, if people want to reach me, I, am, uh, I have an email address, which is msjbrana at gmail.com. Um, I don't think I'll give you my telephone number no. because for yeah. people to ring me from outside yeah. Nepal is going to be a problem. Email is good. Yeah. Uh, email is good. Yeah. It's msjbrana at gmail.com. Okay. Amaniji, we are coming to the end of today's program. Is there any go-away message you would like to leave for Light and Shadow? You mean the program is finished now? <laughs> you want to go on? I can... <laughs> um, well, I, I really don't know what to say because, uh, as I said earlier, uh, people working in the media in Nepal are, uh, I don't know the English word for this, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to advise them. Definitely quality maintain garna pare. Quality to suru dekhi ne quality garna pare. Maniji, thank you so much for sharing your time with Light and Shadow and opening opening your doors. To, uh, thank you to for your home. having me on your show. It's an honor and the journey and being a young kid at that time, 21 years was a young kid to embark on a new adventure, leave the country, you know explore the other side of the globe. I'm sure it must have been very interesting, also uh, difficult in those days. Um, it, it wasn't difficult for me, I'll say it quickly. It wasn't difficult for me because I spoke English. Okay. When I went to the BBC's uh, Bush House, okay. Bush House is the, was the headquarters of the BBC World Service. Mm. So when I went to meet those guys in the office, the first thing one of the head of the department said to me was, Mr. Rana speaks very good English. <laughs> so, it wasn't difficult for me. But English is not so good, but it wasn't. Uh, because the other aspect, like in those days, communication, calling home, family was not easy. Not at all. Writing letters was the yes, only yeah, thing. I know. And uh, phone calls were so expensive those days. I remember. Yeah. So in, in that sense, I was meaning to say, like, it must have been difficult. Yes and no. I mean, it depends on how you take it. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you start missing your family in Nepal a lot, then things become yeah, difficult. Yeah. But if you take it easy, then it's okay. Yeah. Did you just work in the Nepali services? Mostly I was in the Nepali service, but um, I also did things in English, like... Um, the, the, there used to be a program called South Asia Report, Monday to Friday thing, and I think I did that quite a lot. And I stopped doing that when I came to Nepal as a correspondent. Mm -hmm. That was in 1994, just when Mr. Manmohan Adhikari was elected Prime Minister. And I stayed in Nepal as the BBC's correspondent, or stringer as they were called then. Um, till about, I think, February, March 1996. Uh, then I went back to, to England. And the other thing I, I was uh, trying to tell you was I also did an English language teaching program when I was with the Nepali service. And uh, we did a lot for radio in the Nepali service, but there was one particular one called Follow Me, which was done on TV mm -hmm. and it was broadcast in Nepal. And that was a big 
big hit. It was a big, big hit. If I can do something like that, now I'll do it. See, I think it's that follow me, I'm following you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. I have one question. You had a question, my mind. You had an acting offers as actor. I'm glad you asked me that because I had forgotten all about it. John Huston the director of film Hawaii. Uh, it was Michael Caine and uh, I think it was Sean Connery as well. And then there was an Indian actor there in it, Said Jaffrey Bundy. Okay. Uh, Said Jaffrey, like Lino Banda Agari, Maka Akoti, okay. The director and you know the people. I went for a screenshot in their studio, but it didn't work out because I'd never done anything for a, for a movie, you know. And uh, this uh, Sai Jeffrey was a a talented actor, you know, so he he got it. It would have been nice this Magodnuvagove. Absolutely, I would probably be a Hollywood star by star, now. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You're, still, you're still a star. Well, a BBC a little star. One, a little one. And then I also did, uh, I helped a man at SOAS, which is the School of Oriental African Studies, do a, a Nepali learning book. Okay. Um, it, it was, that was quite, quite good. I, I, I still have the book somewhere with me. Um, and. Uh, you know, I did a lot of work for the courts and for the police in London, interpreting. Oh, you've been Because uh, you have lots of Nepalese who do things that they shouldn't be doing. Then they get caught by the police and then... Uh, there, if, if you are not an English-speaking person, you have to... The police usually give you an interpreter. Okay. Whether you speak English good or not. So I did a lot of that as well. I mean, we try to try new things, no matter where we go, good or bad, and then we end up in some direction. So that's... Thank God I didn't. <laughs> yeah. But it's good to experience things. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That is, life would be really boring, you know, it's like no experience, no... Yeah, nothing absolutely. To, nothing to, to laugh about, regret about, or cry about when we get older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 don't, I don't regret anything That's true. about my time in London. That's nice. I think it was your golden years. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, your golden years. And then coming back here, sitting in your home, looking out of the window, the beautiful view. I think you can just sit back and observe all the past memories. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. year. Very, it's, it's a nice place to live yeah. in. I was like talking to you and my eyes kept going out and <laughs> I'm looking out. <laughs> but once again, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. For welcoming, welcoming us to your home and okay. thank you. allowing us to be with you. To all our viewers, we hope you've enjoyed today's talk program with Mr. Mani Rana once the voice for BBC Nepali Services. The entire Light and Shadow team look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Please like, share, subscribe. Be positive, stay blessed. Namaste.